This is problem seven. Mellon is a sole proprietor of a trampoline shop. So that means that this is a business operation, sole proprietor, trampoline shop. So keep that in mind with these activities. During the current year, he had the following transactions. A small warehouse. So we're just going to go through each of these separately. We have A, B, C, D, E, F. We're going to go through each transaction separately, but these all happen during the, during the year. So we have our chart, right? If you need to pause the video and write out the chart, please do that. But we're going to go through each of these transactions. Let's start off A. So in A, we have a small warehouse owned by Mellon was destroyed by a fire on February 1st. The insurance proceeds were $25,000. The building was acquired 10 years ago and had an adjusted basis of $15,000 at the time of the fire. Mellon plans to use the insurance proceeds to build his inventory. Okay, so first step in property transaction is always to calculate the realized gain or loss. So $25,000, amount realized, right, what you get, minus the $15,000 adjusted basis, this gives us a $10,000 gain. We got a $10,000 gain. Step one, complete. Step two, is it recognized? It's destroyed by a fire. What's fire make you think of? Involuntary conversion, right? Section 1033, involuntary conversion, which applies to gains. We got a gain here. However, the money was used to acquire inventory. This is a fire on a warehouse. Are those similar in service or use? No. So section 1033, not recognition cannot apply. What's that mean? That means that all $10,000 is going to be recognized. So step one, step two, complete. Now we go on to characterization. Okay? So first rule for characterization, do we have a capital gain or loss under the general rule? No, why not? It's not a sale or exchange. It's a fire. Involuntary conversion. So then we go to 1231. Does 1231 apply? Yes. Which one? Sub or main? Sub. It's a fire, right? We have a fire, right? So that's the sub hodgepot. It's actually called the fire pot. <laughs> it applies to floods, shipwrecks, tornadoes, hurricanes as well too, but they call it the fire pot. Um, so we got a fire. It's business property, right? We've got a small warehouse owned by Mellon was destroyed by fire. And it's been held for more than a year. We got business warehouse. So that's number three on our capital asset list. Items that aren't a capital asset. It's involuntarily converted by fire. It goes in the sub hodgepot. Held for more than a year. Sub hodgepot. Before we put it in the sub hodgepot, the $10,000 gain, do we have to worry about section 1245? No, why not? Real property. So we got a $10,000 section 1231 gain in the sub hodgepot nothing goes in section 1245 why because it's a warehouse it's not personal property it's real property we can now move on to b a truck used to deliver trampolines was sold on january 2nd for thirty five hundred dollars the truck was purchased four years ago for six thousand dollars on the date of sale the adjusted basis is 2509 so if we subtract 3500 amount realized my adjusted basis of 2509, we get 991 realized gain. Is it recognized? Yes. We sell it. No non-recognition rule applies. Easy. We go on to step three, characterization. We start with our general rules. Is it a capital asset? No. It's property used in business, right? That's depreciable. It's number two on our capital asset list. What's well, not a capital asset? So it's not a capital gain or loss under general rule. So where do we go now? 1231. Does 1231 apply? Yeah. It's a sale. So we're talking about the main hodgepot. It was purchased four years ago. And it's business, personal property. It's been depreciable. Number three in our, or sorry, number two on our list. So section 1231 main hodgepot applies. Before we put in the main hodgepot, what do we have to do? Worry about section 1245. Right? Does 1245 apply? Yes. It's personal property, right? It's a truck. It's a truck that's been depreciated. 1245 doesn't matter whether it's business or investment. You can't depreciate personal use property, right? You all know that. It doesn't matter. It's been depreciated or amortized. It's personal property. It's subject to depreciation recapture. 
And it's a gain. That's also important. It's a $991 gain. If it's a loss, $1245 wouldn't apply, right? So if it's real property or a loss, we can skip $1245 real fast. So we've got a section 1231 gain of $991, but a portion of that or all of it has to be recharacterized. So the rule is it's the lesser of the realized and recognized gain, which equals here, because again, it's a sale, right? Or the amount of depreciation we've taken. We purchased it for $6,000. The adjusted basis at date of sale was $2,509. What does that mean? That means the depreciation is greater than $991. Do you see that? So the lesser of $991 and a number bigger than $991 is $991. Exactly. Right? Doing it smart. We're not going to take our time and use our calculator to calculate. It's going to go right to 991. So the 1245 recapture in B is 991. We can, re we can characterize that immediately as ordinary because if it's 1245, it's always going to be ordinary. Nothing's going to change that. All right. We go to C. Moving through it, right? C, Mellon sold an antique trampoline stretching machine at auction. Net proceeds were... $3,900. The machine was purchased as used equipment 19 years ago for $5,200. It was used in the business and fully depreciated. What's the basis? Zero. Exactly. Because it's been fully depreciated. So what is the realized gain? $3,900. It's all going to be recognized because it's a sale, right? We've gone through that many times now. So we go to step three. We've got a $3,900 realized and recognized gain. Step three is the character. We start off our general rules. We've got a sale or exchange, yes, but it's not a capital asset. It's business, personal property. It's subject to depreciation. It's number two on our list. So it's not a capital gain or loss under our general rules. So we go to section 1231. It's a sale or exchange of business property subject to depreciation. Held for more than a year, right? It's been held for 19 years. It's 1231 main hodgepot. Before we put in the main hodgepot, we have to worry about section 1245. Does 1245 apply? Yeah. It's not real property. It's personal property. It's an antique trampoline stretching machine, a machine. We've taken depreciation. It's fully depreciated. And it results in a gain, and it would be 1231 if not for this rule. Okay? So we need to recharacterize the gain, all of it or part of it, as section 1245. It's the lesser of the $3,900 gain, or we've depreciated the full thing, so it's $5,200 of depreciation. The lesser of those two numbers is $3,900. Look, it's exactly the same as B, exactly the same um, results and exactly the same analysis. So we have a $3,900 ordinary gain. D, Mellon sold an apartment building for $200,000 on September 1st. The rental property was used in business, so it's a business property, not investment. That's important. If you're told it's business property, not investment, you stick with whatever the problem says. Yes, I know the facts say it's a trampoline, but businesses, but a, a specific economic business can have multiple trades or businesses in tax world. Okay? It's possible. So if someone tells you, oh yeah, their main business is trampoline stretching, but they also have rental business, they can be in the rental business. We're going with the facts. After it was purchased for $150,000, 18000 allocated to the land, that's irrelevant by the way, six years ago on September 1st, it was depreciated over a 27 and a half recovery period using straight line method. That's important because section 1250 doesn't apply, right? By the way, for all these problems, we assume the property was acquired after 1986, always, unless we're told otherwise, which in my problems, we don't have that. But here it's telling you that it was always appreciated under makers, 27 and a half. So that means it can't be section 1250. Okay, continuing on. At the day of the sale, the adjusted basis is $125,600. Okay. So we calculate the gain on the transaction at 74400 It's a sale, so it's all recognized. 
So now we go to the characterization. It's not a capital asset because it's business real property, right? It's business real property. If it's investment, it'd be different, but it's business important, right? So then we go to 1231. So it's not a capital gain or loss under general rule. We go to 1231. Is it 1231? Yes. It's 1231 main hodgepot because it's business real property held for more than a year. It's been purchased six years ago. We got 1231 main hodgepot. $74,400. Why did I skip $1,245? It's real property. $1,245 only applies to personal property. Boom. Skipped it. Not even relevant. Moving on to E. See, once you get through a bunch of these, you can just fly right through them. E. An adding machine used by Mellon's bookkeeper was sold for $135 on June 1st. Yeah, I know, adding machine, right? We don't see those anymore. <laughs> Some of these, or these, a lot of these uh, examples I use, I actually took, you know, some of the ideas from past professors. And this one specifically, this problem specifically, was a problem I had with my first tax classes. Professor has been teaching since the uh, 19, early 1970s, so he's still teaching today. Well, depending on when you're listening to the video. Um, but when I, when I record the video, he was, he's still teaching. He's super... Um, old and wise. Um, and he actually sat in on a professor that's been teaching since 19, the 1940s. And he was using his, some well-known tax scholar in, in law school. And he was sitting in uh, his classes. So that's why we have adding machine in here. You're probably watching this, you know, you're probably wondering what, in the future, what is an adding machine? All right, so we got, an, it's personal property. That's all that matters, right? Business personal property. An adding machine used by Mellon's bookkeeper was sold for $135 on, on June 1st. The machine was purchased four years ago, that's important, for $350. It was being depreciated over a five-year recovery period using straight line method. The adjusted basis is $95. So we take $350 amount realized, that's what we get, minus the $95 basis. Wait, I'm sorry. I wrote that wrong. $135 is the amount realized. Good catch. $135 amount realized minus $95 adjusted basis. That gives us a $40 realized gain. Is it recognized? Yes, because it's sold. Go to step three, character, right? It's not a capital gain or loss because it's not a capital asset. It's business personal property number two on our list. Okay, we move on to 1231. Is it 1231? Yeah, it's the main hodgepot. We got, it was purchased four years ago, business personal property, section 12, it's sold or exchanged, business, I'm sorry, it's main hodgepot, main hodgepot. Before we put it there, Got to worry about section 1245. Does it apply? Yeah. It's an adding machine. It's business personal property that's been depreciated. The depreciation taken, it was purchased at 350. The basis now is 95. That's obviously greater than 40. So the lesser is 40. So all 40 is section 12, sorry, 1245, ordinary income. So we can go ahead and characterize it as ordinary income. Okay, now we go to F. Mellon's two-year-old trampoline stretching machine was stolen in May. So it was stolen. It's also two years old. Mellon had forgotten to pay the theft insurance premium, so the insurance company refused to pay for the theft loss. What does that mean? They didn't get anything. Zero amount realized. The machine had an adjusted basis of $6,000 and a fair market value of $8,000 at the time of theft. So... If you have a theft or casualty event, it's a business, and it's fully stolen or fully destroyed, completely destroyed, you always use the basis. So we're going to subtract away the $6,000 adjusted basis, $6,000 loss. So we got a $6,000 loss on this event. So $6,000 realized loss. It's recognized because the non-recognition rule for involuntary conversions only applies to gains. So $6,000 loss recognized. Now you move on to characterization. It's not a capital gain or loss under general rule because it's not a sale or exchange. It's an involuntary conversion, a theft. Then we go to 1231. Sub hodgepot is relevant, right? We've held it for more than a year, right? Two years. It's business, business personal property, subject to depreciation. And also, well, it's a theft, stolen. So it goes into 
the sub hodgepot. However, before we put it there, what about 1245 recapture? It's personal property. Does it matter? No, why not? It's a loss, exactly. 1245 recapture only applies to gains. So losses are irrelevant. So we can put negative $6,000 of loss in the section 1231 sub hodgepot. And we are done with each individual transaction. Now we have to net. So we're going to net now. Everything in 1245 is already ordinary. So we go right to section 1231 sub hodgepot. Remember, we do this in order. Sub hodgepot first. So we net and look at this. We get $4,000 of uh, net gain in the sub hodgepot. What happens then? What do we do when there's a net gain in the sub hodgepot? We move everything in the sub hodgepot to the main hodgepot. So please pay attention. This is very important. You might got to go back and rewatch this a few times. This just these seconds. This is what I do in my charts. I put an arrow and I move these items over. Why? Because again, it's a net gain. So when it's a net gain in the sub hodgepot, everything moves over to the main hodgepot from the sub hodgepot. So boom, 10,000 and negative six move over to the main hodgepot. Okay, now we net the main hodgepot. 84,400 minus 6,000 is 78,400. It's a gain. If it's a gain in the, in the sub hodgepot, a net gain, what happens? Long-term capital. So the long-term capital gain, long-term capital gain, and a long-term capital loss. Last step, and then we're done with the problem. We look at any long-term capital gains. Any long-term capital gains in the problem, we have to look if there's any unrecaptured section 1250 applicable. If there is, we got to note that. Now, in my videos for my class, I'm not going to make you have to calculate that, but just note that it's important. But it would be the lesser of the amount of depreciation taken or the realized recognized gain. But I'm not going to make you calculate that. I'm just going to note it. That will be the calculation. For those of you watching this that aren't taking my class, it's the lesser of the amount of depreciation taken or the realized recognized gain on the transaction, just like 1245, but applying it to real property. So the first long-term capital gain is an A. That's a warehouse, and we did depreciate it. That means that section, I'm sorry, unrecaptured section 1250 does apply. It'd be the lesser of the depreciation taken or the realized recognized gain. So I'm just going to say unrecaptured section 1250 applies to that, some portion or all of it. In D, it's an apartment building that's been depreciated. It's a long-term capital gain. Same thing. Unrecaptured section 1250 applies. It's the lesser of the amount of depreciation taken or the realized recognized gain, just like you're applying 1245. And that concludes this problem.